Hey now, I know that we have covered the basics of logarithmic amplifiers and anti-log amplifiers, we are going to take a closer look at the open base analog multiplier. Uh, again, at the block diagram level, uh, we use two logarithmic amplifiers where we provided uh, signals V1 and V2. We calculate the logarithm of both signals. Then we add those logarithms, those logarithms together. Um, and finally, we perform the anti-log of that. And we're taking advantage of the fact that one of the properties of logarithms is that uh, a sum of logarithms equals the logarithm of a product. And so what we're expecting to get at the output is something proportional to the product of the two inputs. Based on the simple uh, diode logarithmic amplifier and anti-log amp, I have put together this circuit. Noted that the first stage are two logarithmic amplifiers where I'm feeding in signals V1 and V2. Uh, the output of each one of those is added via an inverting adding amplifier and inverting summer uh, with weighted gains of one for every input. And then the result of that is fed into an anti-log amplifier. I have rewritten the equations uh, for the output of the diode-based log amp and anti-log amp so we can easily go through the circuit and figure out what the final value of the output will be or derive the final value of the output. In order to do that, um, I'm going to go ahead, first I'm going to highlight these equations, so we keep them in mind. And uh, then I'm going to go calculating intermediate points um, in, my, in my circuit, the intermediate point signals. So this will be VA and VB, those are the outputs of my logarithmic amplifiers. I'm going to call this VC, the output of my summing amplifier, and VL will be the output of my anti-log amplifier. So based on the uh, log amp equation there, I will have that VA is going to be equal to uh, negative VT times the natural log of V1 divided by IS times R. Uh, likewise, VB is going to be equal to negative VT times the natural log of V2 divided by IS times R. VC is going to be um, the sum of those two signals. Notice that this is an inverting summing amplifier, and so each one of the signals is going to be multiplied times a weight of minus one. And so I will have that this is equal to negative VA plus VB, or VT natural log of V1 over IS times R, plus VT times the natural log of V2 over IS times R. Now this is the sum of two logarithms, and we know from the properties of logarithms that the sum of logarithms equals the logarithm of the product, and so I can rewrite this as um, Vt natural log of V1 times V2 divided by Is squared R squared. And that's the value of Vc, which is then fed into the input of my anti-log amplifier. From here I can calculate my output voltage which is going to be equal to, uh, per the anti-log amplifier equation, negative IS times R e to the V in divided by VT, or basically 1 over VT times uh, V in, which is equal to VT times the natural log of V1, V2, divided by IS squared times R squared. Uh, so my VT terms are going to cancel out uh, e to the natural log of that expression is simply that expression, so I'll have negative IS times R times V1, V2 divided by IS squared, R squared, uh, which is equal to negative V1, V2 divided by IS times R. And so this will be uh, the output of my analog multiplier implemented with um, uh, op amps. Now, as we mentioned, there are limitations to this circuit, the two main limitations being bandwidth, because of the op-amps being bandwidth limited, uh, but also it is a single quadrant multiplier, because if you look at the logarithmic amplifiers, as well as the exponential amplifier, um, current can only flow through those diodes in one direction in order to forward bias them.